What's up YouTube? And uh, another quick video with the cell phone, like I said again. I don't have a gimbal or a GoPro and I'm not going to really invest in that until I actually start on this aquarium. Until now it's just really quick videos of the cell phone. Um, but better editing is coming. These are just lazy videos right now. But this is the BRS 7 stage reverse osmosis deionization, RODI system. Uh, it's the water saver. It's a 200 gallon per day system. I figured I'd show this because not many people really have this on YouTube yet. And uh, when you order this, I ordered this as the Black Friday doorbuster special, so it was significantly cheaper than what they offer. And what you're going to get is. Hello? The Infinity Stones are mine! Yeah, you're not going to get that. But the trailer for the new Avengers movie just dropped. Endgame. Uh, trailer looks good. They didn't spoil it with a lot of CGI stuff. Anyway. So what you'll get is you'll get a bag like this. It's filled with a bunch of parts. A lot of the stuff you're not going to really use. This is going to attach directly to your faucet. And it's got a quick attach here for the tubing. What they're also going to give you is a float. This is if you're doing an RODI top-off kit and you have a container that you're dispensing RODI water into and you can use this flute or this float, sorry, and it will automatically shut off the RODI system. But I'm not using this yet. Another inline bypass valve. Don't really need to use it. Wrench. This takes off the filters. This is how you turn you twist this on and off, and this gets your filters uh, off and on the actual system. Miscellaneous adapters, inline, three-way valve, some brackets to kind of hold everything together. A book, which really does not tell you much. I'm going to be honest with you. It doesn't really tell you a whole lot. Unless you've hooked up an RODI system, it does you know, really quick how to do this, but it only showcases this system. And that is obviously not what I got. So it's basically one book for all other systems. And then what you get for the water saver is, and they call this a seven stage system. I couldn't really figure out why it's seven stage because there's not seven units on here. You get um, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then maybe... You know, seven and eight. I don't know why they call it a seven stage, but the reason why you get all these uh, DI filters is um, to extend the life of your cartridges and everything. And really, the water saver option is these two RO membrane units here. Usually, you have one, uh, two uh, filters, obviously, twice the amount of water, and you can go so on and so forth from there. But when you move up with more RO membranes, the most important thing you got to remember is you must have good water pressure. If you don't have good water pressure, you're going to have to get the pump unit for this. It does cost extra money. I have around 64 pounds of pressure at this house. Um, that's significant enough, enough for me to be able to do this. I'd like 70, but you know, when you push past, you know, 65 and 70 pounds, it starts to get, you know, not really good for your house. Um, you also get this here. This tells you about the TDS monitor that is on the unit. Um, it's a long read. It also has these instructions telling you, you know, line one to sensor one, line two, line three to sensor three, in and out and all this stuff. And it looks fairly complicated as far as trying to join all the lines that are running into the RODI system with the right uh, sensors because this is going to tell you what your total dissolved solids are at the tap, after the RO system, and after the DI system. But you don't have to do any of this stuff. Because when it came, BRS actually already had this all hooked up. These are the sensors they're talking about. All this was done. So when you get this unit, you're going to have this in one box, you're going to have that in another box, and then you're going to have a bunch of this spare tubing here, which um, I use some of it. A lot of it is just extra. So with the RO systems, red's always going to come from the tap. That's your dirty water. Black is the wastewater. Blue is the clean water. So it has this adapter right here. All right, now this, what they don't tell you is this particular setup I have, this is a garden hose size um, mill 
fitting. So what I needed to do was go to Amazon and buy a male to male reducer. And it was easy. It's just, just Google or go on Amazon and just put uh, garden hose to tap um, adapter. But you may not have to because, again, this was an industrial uh, faucet that I had specifically installed here. And it has the larger garden hose adapter. Most people are going to have the faucet adapter. not going to worry about this. This adapter here came with it. This came from BRS. What it is is it's a uh, bypass. So... If you don't want to use this thing and completely bypass and have your faucet unusable without having to take this off, you can use this. Uh, it, it hooks up here and then you can flip this switch, you'll get the sink. See, we're still under a little pressure because I used the RO system last night. And you can flip this back and it'll go to the RO system. Um, so the way it goes is it goes tap water up into this filter right here. Then it'll go to this one, it goes to this one, then it goes to this one, then it goes to this one. This one will shoot out the wastewater. There's a line here that you can use to flush the system. Okay, so what this does is right now, perpendicular, it's going to make RO water. To extend the life of these membranes, you can flush these membranes and this unit, and you flip it this way, and it's gonna bypass most of this system, and it's gonna flush it out in case there's any debris, um, junk from your water lines or whatever that are that are left over in here, and you can flush it out, and it extends the life of your RO membrane. But I already ran this last night, so I'm not gonna really show you the flush option. All it does is it basically just, regular water goes comes out of the blue line versus RO water, and you flip this over. I don't think you really wanna ever have this flipping back and forth while the unit is 100% pressurized. I'm sure that probably is going to wear out some of this valve on here. I usually crank down the pressure a little bit before I flip this over and I'll show you how to do that. It's really easy. It's just turning the handle on your on your sink. So it's going to come back through here. Here's the blue line here. It does come out a blue line because remember this system is designed to just make our water by itself but it's not going to be 100% zero TDS because you don't have the DI system. So it comes through here, goes into line one here, line one to line two, line two to line three. Line three is the pure RO water that I have going into the 180 right now. We're about half full. There's a bad glare because that window there, that one, yeah, and we're still in winter. Got the rock work in, everything's glued in, sand is in. It's not a very deep sand bed. I don't want a deep sand bed. I've done that before. You get a lot of sino, you get a lot of junk that's in there, you get a lot of um, just a lot of detritus uh, in, in some areas. So this really isn't a deep sand bed. I think this is only about maybe an inch at the most in some areas. I try to keep it to a half an inch. I have a deeper sand bed in the sump, and I will go over this plumbing. Like I said, my first uh, video was the plumbing, it was a quick intro, and from that point on, I'm going to do a still camera, so yeah, you're not gonna get any of this stuff, and I will show you my whole entire plumbing system. It's just not quite ready yet. I wanted to fill the tank and then get everything ready and start the cycle process because I'm doing this with raw shrimp, no quickie cycles, no nothing. The only shortcut is there's a couple bags of live sand in there, and that's it. So, the IRO system, I'll turn it on for you. You're gonna see, all I gotta do is just turn on the cold water, don't use hot water, cold water, and you're gonna see it start to pressurize. Here's your valve, and it's gonna show you what pressure, and this is awesome, that it can actually tell you what pressure is going into the RO system so there's no guesswork. You're not gonna see it pressurize yet because when you first turn it on, your systems are gonna fill. And try not to fill it too fast. Try to just kind of don't go full throttle with the water right off the bat. And then when it starts, you'll eventually see it come out of here. You will see that you will, the wastewater is going to come out first. This is the wastewater line. And it will produce wastewater always. 
that's going to produce wastewater first. Now the other RO systems that aren't like the 200 gallon, 75 gallon, 150 and the water saver ones, you're going to get a steady stream of wastewater like this and what's going to happen on the other end is the RO water that you produce is really just going to be at a fast drip. Most of these units, they're going to waste about two gallons of water for every one gallon produced. This produces one gallon of RO water for every one and a half wasted. So it's the best you can possibly do for your water bill and save some money. Here's the other end of it right here. Glare. It's about matching the wastewater at a one for one pace right now. Here's the gauge. You're going to increase your RO production as your pressure goes up. I'm not quite at the pressure I should be, so I'm just turning the handle slowly to watch the gauge and get it about, because I know I'm going to be at those 64. 62. Looks like 64, 63 almost is about as good as I'm going to do. It is the middle of the day and people are probably using water and that is going to have a factor. Uh, it's going to factor, it's going to play into this. If a lot of people in your area are using water and drawing off the main, your pressure may dip a little bit, but it's holding about 64. TDS monitor. Turn it on here. Line one is coming from the RO system. Focus. There you go. So that's coming from the RO system. And your TDS is sitting, I don't know why it's not, it's having a hard time focusing. It was at one. Now you're told when you first have the system that you will get some extra TDS coming from the RO system itself until it cleans itself out and it works itself out. Like a break-in period. Yesterday I was getting one after the RO system. Now I'm getting zero. So line two is out of this second canister and that's reading zero and line three is coming directly into the aquarium that's the end and it's reading zero so when you realize your DI canisters are need, gonna need to be changed the first one obviously is gonna need to be changed is number two number three is gonna be the last and you'll notice that because TDS numbers are gonna come up this is really neat oh and it comes with batteries and BRS again like I said they have all of these lines already trimmed and all the sensors already set to go. So this is a seven stage system from BRS. Again, it's the water saver. It's the 200 gallon per day unit. I don't see a whole lot of this on YouTube and it's the unit that I decided to use when we're running this tank. Um, this is kind of the setup. I have a closet right next to the tank where I can pull all my RO from. There will eventually, like I said in my last video, be a line that goes directly through here, through the wall, into the sump, into an RO container that will sit there with a float valve, and there will be an auto top off unit sitting in the sump. But we're not there yet. So until then, with the lovely glare, as much as you can see, rock work is in, RO water is being dumped in. I am adding salt as we go. I'm using the Reef Pro Mix, which this stuff is basically like baby powder. It's like talcum powder when you put it in the water. It's very, very fine. It mixes well. You almost don't even need to mix it. So that's why I don't have a mixing station set up because as I add RO water in, I'm just dumping in a, a salt as I go and just mixing it up and just watching with the refractor meter to see how my salinity is. But I'm not too concerned with it right now until I get this topped off and get the cycle process going. Uh, I'm not worried too much on the concentration of salinity as long as I get it fairly close during this fill process. I can always uh, fine tune it later. So that's the end of this video. Pretty long, but I wanted to show you the RO system and kind of the setup that I'm using right now. I wanted to show you how it goes because again, like I said, if this is a regular RO system, this is just gonna be drip, 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 drip. And that's no good. No bueno for your water bill. So the gallon saver unit is worth the extra money. In the long run, you're going to be saving a lot in your water bill.